Praise the Lord and greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are so happy to be here with you with the Word of God and I'm sure that something that is very special, very blessed is being prepared for you Hallelujah. right now. The Bible says whatever the Lord prepares for those who love him, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard and uh, such a blessed thing is being prepared. Let us look to the Lord in prayers. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise your holy name. Lord, thank you for giving us yet again an opportunity to worship you, to adore you, to lift your name on high. Thank you, Master, that you have enabled us to celebrate your faithfulness. Lord, whatever you have spoken, every word, word by word, letter by letter, it has come to pass in our lives. And Lord, you are still speaking. You are still preparing. You are still elevating. You are still delivering people. You are still performing wonders. You are still honoring your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, we give you glory and honor and praises. Lord, as your word says, wherever your name is lifted up, wherever your name is glorified, you'll be present with your power and might. And Lord Master, yes, my Lord, Lord, we pray, may your hands come upon each and every one these precious people that are connected through this network thank you Jesus thank you for answering all our prayers may hands continue to bless us O Lord may hands continue to deliver us may hands continue to heal us O Lord we give all glory and honor and praises in the blessed name of Jesus we pray amen amen, amen. Right, <clears throat> we're going to sing a song that's known for all of us almost. Jehovah Jera, my provider. Jehovah Jera, my provider, His grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jera. I provide His grace is sufficient for me. My God shall supply all my needs according to His riches in glory. He will heal His angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provide. Grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provide. His grace is sufficient for me. My God shall supply all my needs according to His riches and glory. He will give His angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh cares. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the year. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the year. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the year. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the year. Our God is great, greatly to be praised. Our God is great, greatly to be praised. 
will celebrate. Sing unto the Lord, I sing to him a new song. I will celebrate. Sing unto the Lord, I will sing to him a new song. I will praise him. I will sing to him a new song. I will praise him. I will sing to him a new song. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me. May God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory. He will give me things to charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. We'll sing one more song. You are beautiful <coughs> beyond description. Beautiful beyond description, to marvelous for world, to wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp? Your infinite wisdom Who can fathom The depths of your love You are beautiful beyond Description Majesty Enthroned above I stand, I stand In awe of you I stand I stand in awe of you, holy God, to whom all praise is due. I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you, holy God, to whom. All praise is you. I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God, to whom. All praise is to I stand in awe of you. I stand in awe of you. Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus, you are beautiful, you are wonderful, Lord Jesus, amen, thank you, Jesus, I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in our fear. Holy God, to whom all praise is due. I stand in our fear. 
working God and God is a miracle working God thank you Holy Spirit thank you Lord change my heart oh Lord 
make it ever true. Change my heart, oh Lord, may I be like you. Change my heart, oh Lord, make it ever Change my heart, oh Lord, may I be like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. Make me and mold me, this is what I pray. Change my heart, oh Lord, make it ever true. Change my heart, oh Lord, may I be like you. Change my heart, oh Lord, make it ever true. In my heart, oh Lord, may I be like you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, you are preparing a table. You are preparing our goodness. You are preparing our miracle. And Lord, give us the hell. I mean, give us the hope. Give us the faith that is needed for us to put all our trust in you. Even though we don't see anything. Even though we don't see any movement. Amen, Even though we don't hear any prophecies. We still believe your hands are preparing something for Amen. us. Lord. Hallelujah. Thank your God. mighty hands are preparing something glorious for us. Something wonderful for us. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord Jesus, you are good always, and you are good all the times. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we put all of our trust in you. In our spirit, we feel, we feel that something is being prepared for us, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. We give all glory to you, Lord Master. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us prophetically. 
minister to these precious people whatever situations they are in whatever things that they are expecting Jesus. Lord I pray that you will minister to them each one of them Amen. and reveal your glory thank you Jesus we give all praises Hallelujah. all glory and honor to you Amen. the blessed name of Jesus we pray Amen 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 please turn your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 4 And we are going to read uh, two verses, 43 and 44. Second Kings chapter 4, verses 43 and verses 44. But his servant said, what? Shall I set this before 100 men? He said again, give it to the people that they may eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left over. So he set it before them and they ate and had some left over according to the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So um, this evening, I believe that something is already in the pipeline. Something is being prepared for you. Once, I, I think a year ago, I just put something like this uh, on the Facebook. When God prepares your table, even delays are delicious. Right? If the table is prepared by God, even your delays are delicious. Okay. So I strongly believe that for most of us who has come this night connected through this network this night, something that is prepared, something, you know, more than what you need is being prepared by the Lord. Right? So uh, it is going to be a faith appetizer this evening. What you're going to hear from God is a faith appetizer. Right? And uh, the verse that we read, it starts, but, but. So I strongly believe, you know, you also or in a situation where even the sentence starts with but. But, you know, in the presence of God, in the presence of God, there is an answer, a solution for everything. For everything. Okay? So, but the servant said, what? Shall I set this before 100 men? He said once again. Bible says, Elisha said once again, give it to the people that they may eat. So he said this even at the first place. Now he's repeating his word because he's full of confidence. Because he, he's aware that God is totally unlimited. This night, before getting into the depth of this word, I want you to have this in your heart. Our God is totally unlimited. Amen. He cannot be, you know, nothing can limit him. He's totally unlimited. So it's up to you because Bible says when Gideon prayed and he asked, Lord, I want a sign from you. Just I want you to wet this woolen fleece and let all the land be dry. And Bible says the next morning, God answered him. His prayer was answered. But what I see is that this man, by his prayer, he has limited God. 
He had all the power, all the resources, and he was, you know, powerful enough to wet the entire world. But the prayer of Gideon limited God to the extent where he only wants to see his woolen sleeves, you know, wet. But the next day, when he prayed, Bible says, Lord, now I know that you are totally unlimited. So I pray that this time I want you to wet the whole earth. And Bible says that prayer was answered that night itself. So when you acknowledge that God is unlimited, your prayers are answered instantly. Praise the Lord. So what is the revelation that you have concerning God matters because that is connected parallelly to your prayer. If you, if you acknowledge that God is big, then your prayer is also big. When you acknowledge or your awareness about God is too small, then you will automatically limit God through your prayers. So this night, I want to tell you that the Lord whom we worship, the Lord whom we all serve is totally unlimited. Yes, and when Bible says with God, everything is possible, that everything includes all the no man has ever stated to you. Sister Deborah from Singapore, I'm prophesying to you. When everything is possible means everything, including all those statements, negative statements by people who have ever said no, cannot be, cannot. In Singapore language, I'm saying can. Yes, can, it's can, you know, because people of Singapore always say, can, can, can. So I'm prophesying to you, it is possible. Amen. When God says it is possible, it includes everything people have ever stated cannot be not possible. So this night, with that faith, we are just getting into this uh, chapter. Amazingly, Second Kings chapter 4, it starts with a jar that was full of oil inside the house and ends with a pot, large pot that was empty inside the house. Amazingly, God used both. So this night, you might be a vessel that is full of anointing or maybe you are in a place where you are totally dry. You are totally dry. But the Lord says, yet I will use you. Yet I will use you to prepare my people. Yet I will use you to satisfy my people. Yet I will use you to prepare my people to receive something big than you know, what, they, what they ever imagined. Praise the Lord. Our God is a miracle working God. And I strongly believe that he wants to use you. Even though you are a vessel that is full of oil or a pot that is totally empty, our God is still able to use you mightily. Amen. Praise the Lord. I mean, the thing is, as long as you stay inside the house, as long as you stay inside the house of God, inside his presence, it is easy for him to use you mightily for his glory. Yeah. Right. So let's uh, read the 38 verse, Second Kings chapter 4 and verses 38. And Elisha returned to Gilgal and there was a famine in the land. Elisha returned to Gilgal and there was a famine in the land. We know, you know, that when Elisha left Gilgal, when Elisha left Gilgal, 
He left Gilgal along with prophet Elijah, but then he was only a servant who was pouring water to the hands of Elijah. So his role was insignificant. You know, he was required only when a meal was served, when everything was done, only at the tail end of everything, his service was needed. So he was considered as the least. But now, when Bible says, and Elisha returned to Gilgal, this time he has, you know, a different identity. Now he is anointed with a double portion of anointing. And now he is taken up the role of the leader. Just as Elijah was used mightily by God, now in that place, Elisha, according to the word of God, because, you know, when, when Elijah was so depressed in his spirit, when he went and hid himself into a cave, the Lord clearly spoke the order of events, and he said, in your place, in your place, you anoint Elisha. So now Elisha stands in the place of a national prophet, from a servant to a national level of elevation. So I prophesy that to you. The Lord is elevating you, you know, to a nobody, from a nobody to a somebody who is significant and who is known in the entire nation. Because, you know, he is being anointed the place of Elijah. So he is the one officially recognized even by the kings. That is why, you know, when you read in the third chapter, you see three kings walked all the way to Elijah because they acknowledged the anointing that was upon Elisha. So I strongly believe that, you know, it is time for people to see a different you. It is time for people to acknowledge the identity that is established to you through the anointing. Praise the Lord. And now he comes to this place. Elisha returns to Gilgal and Bible says there was a famine in the land. So the anointing, anointing through the anointing, what is possible is that, you know, he can sustain himself and also everyone that is connected to him even during this famine. And even during this famine is powerful enough through the anointing, empowered by the anointing to overcome the situation. He has something inside of him through which he can transform the atmosphere. Praise the Lord. So I strongly believe, you know, the Lord takes you out of where you are, equips you, you know, empowers you, and brings you into the same situation where you were once, but with a different identity. But now that you have something, you have received something, you know, with that you can handle the situation. You can transform the dryness. You can, you know, I mean, put out the famine. All things are possible because now the Lord has equipped you. Praise the Lord. So same place, same Gilgal. So I prophesy to you, sometime you might feel that you are walking into a same situation where you were some months ago or years ago, but you must know that this time the Lord is bringing you here on purpose because the anointing is there upon you. Praise the Lord. The anointing is there and you'll be able to tackle the situation, handle the situation. You'll be able to emerge victorious. You'll be able to come out of this struggle. 
whatsoever that's going on personally the lord says i have already anointed you i have already empowered you and in this season i have given you the power to transform your atmosphere praise the lord hallelujah amen sister narahari i am prophesying to you the lord says god is watching over you he has already assigned angels to protect you protect you and all everything that belongs to you and the lord will soon release your miracle whatever that has been prepared even though you are not aware of it it will reach you it will reach you Hallelujah. and you will be satisfied and god is going to release more than what you actually need yes. praise the lord amen so the lord says do not be depressed do not be depressed he is just pulling you out of the pit he is pulling you out of the pit and he will definitely cause you to stand on the rock amen. praise the lord i mean the power of grace the power of grace you will witness the power of his grace praise the lord i mean it is going to manifest in your life because of the love of the lord praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah amen right so elisha returns to gilgal there was a famine in the land now that is equipped to handle praise the lord imagine moses moses in the wilderness was equipped well equipped empowered and was sent back to the same place where you know once he was afraid now that you know he can handle every situation is empowered by the lord to handle every situation and this time you know he was so victorious he was so majestic in all his war and that's what i'm saying to you once the palace of egypt saw a moses was so fearful afraid running away from situation now they are about to witness a moses who is willing to face situation face to face yeah, praise the lord so that kind of transformation is taking place in you and only after such a transformation god will bring you back to where you were praise the lord i mean so now elisha you know went out of gilgal from gilgal with elijah and uh, we know that he was a servant but now now he is elevated empowered by god will equip by god to handle the situation so dear children of god i want to prophesy to you and say if you are in a similar situation if you feel that it is a back to square one situation you must know something has happened in the meantime while the lord permitted the situation in your life yet again yes it happened like this 7 years ago or 4 years ago but now also we see that somehow we are caught up in the same situation but the lord says not this time this time my anointing rests upon you my favors are ever increasing upon you and so you will emerge victorious you will break this yoke and you will come out of this situation praise the lord amen right and the 38th verse 38th verse also says uh elisha said to his servant put on the large pot and boil stew for the sons of the prophets put on the large pot and boil stew for the sons of the prophets praise the lord you must know that this is a conversation between elisha and his servant 
did he say any word to any of the sons of the prophets? No, absolutely not. The conversation was between the prophet and his servant. And what all the sons of the prophets were doing, and uh, 38 verse says, Elisha returned to Gilgal and there was a famine in the land. Now the sons of the prophets were sitting before him. So all of them are inside the house and all of them are seated in the presence of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Psalms 46 and verses 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. When you are made to sit in God's presence, better tarry in his presence. Better wait upon the Lord. Do anything only if God asks you to do. Ephesians 2, 6 says, God made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And the previous verse talks about the grace of God. So I believe Grace has the power to pull you out of the pit of sin and has the power to elevate you to greater heights even up to the heavenlies. Praise the Lord. And because of the grace of God, just because of the grace of God, we are positioned in the heavenlies. We are privileged to sit with Jesus on the heavenlies. So the Lord says, you know, just wait here. The conversation is not between you and God. It is between God and his angels. Because angels are the ministering spirits. Bible says angels are the ministering spirits sent to minister for those who are called by God, who are saved by God. So for believers, angels are ministering spirits. So the conversation is between God and his angels. The Lord has commanded the angels to do something, to prepare something for you. Which means he wants you to stay with him in his presence. But the thing is that, you know, out of all these sons of the prophets, which means out of the hundred people, one is so curious. Because he heard the word too. He heard the words too. Hey, what is this? We all are hungry. And this man has got in his kitchen a lot of flour. He has a lot of wheat flour. But he is ordering, he's ordering a stew for us. What is this? But the man of God was able to, able to sense that something is being prepared for these many people. Something is being prepared. And that prepared thing is going to arrive. And that thing that is going to arrive is going to be miraculously multiplied. See, uh, El Elisha is holding a double portion of anointing. And so he is able to foresee everything clearly. He's able to foresee that which the sons of the prophet, that one person was not able to see, the man of God is very much able to see. You know, Elisha is just preparing an appetizer. But the sons of the prophet, this particular person feels that this is the meal. Hey, we are so hungry. Our need is very big. But in my eyes, what has been prepared? As far as what I heard, what has been prepared is, you know, is not sufficient. It is not a wholesome meal, you know. It's only a stew. Why should this man of God do all these things when God has provided him, you know, house full of flour? Is having that all kept inside in the storehouse. But still, why, why, why? Sometimes when you don't see, your mind is full of questions. 
when he hears something that is very feeble or when he hears something that you cannot comprehend hey the need is big but the man of god or even god is speaking only about a stew praise the lord when god speaks about a stew you must imagine that the thing that is going to come is going to satisfy you and there is also going to be left over praise the lord i mean but this poor person is not aware of that so what he is planning is that okay let me contribute i know how this too is going to be but you know i want i want more because this too may not be you know sufficient enough for these many people everyone is hungry so the need is big but what has been spoken or what has been overheard is very very small it's like the handful of you know cloud a cloud you know as much as a palm of a person so sometime we are hearing or we are seeing something that that is smaller than what the need is maybe you're planning to relocate maybe you are praying and asking god to buy a house but what you have comparatively is lesser than what you need but i must tell you when god did not say a word to you remain in his presence tarry in his presence and continue in the grace of god praise the lord amen when you continue in the grace of god very soon after the appetizer is done the door will be knocked and something that is already prepared by god will reach you even in the time of famine it will reach you see god's original plan was to serve them a full meal with the appetizer in the time of the famine when all of the others were left with no food or with little food those who are inside the presence of god those who you know submitted to sit in the presence of god is honored by god by providing them a full meal with an appetizer praise the lord so don't be agitated when you see the appetizer don't be agitated something big is on the way something you know delicious is on the way something that is first because you know the first fruits that's what bible says what was brought to the man of god was part of the first yield the first fruits which means the finest the finest the lord is bringing the finest so what this man did is that you know he just went out because bible says the man went out 39th verse so one went out into the field and gather herbs herbs so in other words he just wanted to add you know some spices he didn't do anything wrong he just wanted to wanted the stew to be spiced oh what is going to happen here i hear that they are just going to make some stew who wants a stew let us just try our best to get some herbs and put it inside so that it will be quantity wise more and also little bit tastier i i think you know probably this too was not you know a big deal it was not a, a tasty one you know sometime when god provides you the appetizer 
the appetizer you know why why it is called appetizer when you take some soup or when you take some stew it actually you know brings uh, uh, a better hunger or you know it will not sub you know subside it will not subside your hunger but it will you know allow the i mean create a tendency to eat more which means appetizers are designed and released at the first place because that will prepare you to receive in greater portion praise the lord amen so you must know i believe you know a few people among this congregation right now you are tasting the appetizer hallelujah appetizer oh what is this you know sometime not sometime wherever i go you know one of my favorite is uh, sweet corn chicken when they ask for soup i used to say sweet corn chicken and in the most of these star hotels sweet corn chicken is going to be something you know it's really going to be something sweet but what i will do is that i will add black pepper to it i will add some pinch of salt to it and i will make it as black as possible because it comes in white color but now it is black in color and so you know spiced soup now so if you take the original soup that is meant to create a you know appetite to expand your system to receive more praise the lord and so during famine when everyone was restricted god is preparing a stew for you so that after having it you will have the tendency to receive more and the lord knows for sure that it will demand a miracle to cause what has been prepared to increase in such a way that you will have more appetite and you will eat more and still there will be left over praise the lord amen. amen so faith that's why i named this as the title of the sermon faith appetizer so it prepares room for more faith and you will receive more sister purnima right now you are having your cup of appetizer don't worry about the taste don't feel that why it is not spicy the purpose of the stew is to make you receive more hallelujah and soon you will discover why the lord led you through this path while you are still holding the cup of appetizer the lord says i am bringing more i'm releasing more into your life praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah so i feel it in my spirit that many of us are having the appetizer and when the appetizer is done when you drink your stew it is not immediately you don't see the meal but there's a small waiting time and as you just wait they will serve you the main dishes so in order to take that time the lord you know allowed those who brought the you know the prepared food they just brought something that was just limited so that time span the small time span taken between the appetizer and the main course meal was the miracle time so your waiting time between the appetizer and the meal is the miracle praise the lord so the lord says so don't move out don't move out so he was just moving out of the zone while others were still waiting in the presence of god one is moving out 
So don't ever move out of the presence of God. Don't do anything that is not required from you. God doesn't need your assistance. Sometimes we feel that, you know, hey, God needs some assistance. When the Lord called Abraham and Sarah, when he said, I'm going to make you a big nation. Just leave this place and go to the place which I will show to you. And instantly Abraham, he took his wife, not just his wife, but also his uncle's son, Lot with him, nephew Lot with him, and also all the people. That's what the Bible says. He took almost a colony of people along with him because he thought he wants to assist God. How can he bring out a nation from just me and my wife? This is what all of us do. But we, we, we fail to remember that not a nation, but the entire world is the result of one man and one woman, Adam and Eve. If God can create a world out of just two people, you know, he can easily make a nation out of two people. So God doesn't need an assistant. So don't give your suggestions to God. Just stay in the presence of God until he serves you the appetizer. And when he serves you the appetizer, you know, don't think that, you know, or don't murmur and complain saying that, hey, this is not that much good. I, I must have added some, some herbs to it. So he went out for the herbs, but he found a wild wine, gathered a lap full of wild gods. He brought them and sliced them into the pot of stew. Did not know what they were. He was not aware of what he was doing. So let us not add anything anything to what the Lord has commanded through his word. You might think that it, it is a good thing, but the end result is that people, the prophet, sons of the prophet said, Master, there is death in the pot. There is death in the pot. And Bible says nobody was able to eat out of it. He wanted to Help the stew, but he has spoiled the stew. So all efforts taken to help God will actually spoil the stew. Abraham is a good example, again, because Sarah wanted to help God by providing Hagar. So all that you do to help God spoils the stew. So what is needed? Simply sit at the feet of Jesus. Lord, I know even when I'm waiting according to your word, even delay is going to be delicious. So let me just stay in your presence and you will definitely do the needful. When you serve the appetizer, let me thank you, Lord, even though it doesn't taste good. I do remember the second or third time I went to Singapore in uh, 2010. One great man of God, because I, I, I ministered in that church. So that great man of God, those days, you know, the shark fin soup was available. Now it is banned everywhere. So now it is available illegally. So this man took me uh, to a five-star hotel. And he said, Pastor, we want to honor you. And so we want to give you something that, you know, there's no way that you have tasted it in India. And I asked, what is that? He said, shark fin soup. I was imagining, you know, so many things. Oh, such a huge fish and that shark fin, they are taking and that soup, how glorious it's going to be. So after 20 minutes, he, he brought a bowl full of soup. To me, it looked like the rice kanji that's made in India. It looked like that. 
and a lot of garnishing a lot of vegetables are there and uh, you know a lot of things were there so out of all i mean curiosity i took that spoon and just tried the first sip i was not even able to take it closer to my nose it was sorry to say a lot of a few uh, chinese people are here but sorry to say it was very terrible for me but you know that pastor was enjoying it like anything he was enjoying like anything and uh, my parents when we were small be little children they have taught us that we should not waste anything no so what i have to do i have to run for the black pepper yet again and put that black pepper inside i had little salt i asked him to bring some green chilies and put that all inside and drank the whole thing <laughs> after that you know he was so politely you know taking it sip by sip but i didn't have the patience to do so after it was all done very quickly that suddenly the pastor saw me the bowl is empty he was shocked and he asked you want one more cup i said no no thank you thank you pastor for the love thank you i think we can go for some, some other dish and he said yes of course it's an appetizer the main course will just come and what i'm what i wanted to say tell you is that sometime the appetizer is not tasty but just as i did you have to take it you have to consume it so that it will create a room it will expand your ability and capacity to receive more from god praise the lord amen so i feel in my spirit that for a few people the stew is already served the stew is already served and you know just wait for the uh, main course and 41 verse 41 then bring some flour and he put it into the pot and then he said serve it to the people so see this is why i'm 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 i mean i'm saying it again because the man of god when they complained to the man of god and said you know man of god there's death inside the pot so you know you have to just throw it out it's harmful so he is also aware that you know the main course is coming but he did not throw it away he altered it purified the pot and then he made it a point that everyone eats this first that's why he said appetizer is good for you it creates space so that you will receive more when the main course meal arrived physically speaking it is not it will not be sufficient for these many people just because now they are with increased appetite so the lord did a miracle and caused the meal to expand increase and every 100 people they were just satisfied they were able to eat you know more than what they can on a normal day so i strongly believe he will serve you the appetite i mean appetizer and he will serve you the main course meal just get ready how to get ready continue to sit in the presence of god continue to abide in his word continue in the grace of god and you will definitely be able to taste that which is prepared by god and so even in the season of famine when all other people around you are getting very little or getting nothing the lord will definitely provide you the appetizer 
and also the full meal so that you'll be satisfied and you will give glory to the Lord. And the word of God, that's very important. The last verse, it says, you know, 44th verse. So he set it before them and they ate and had some left over according to the word of the Lord. So whatever the Lord has prophesied, whatever he has promised, he will definitely, you know, cause it to happen. So don't worry about the discussion. The discussion was about this too. So he will serve you what is discussed and he will also bring to you what you are not aware of. Whatever that is not discussed also will be served to you on the table. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us just close our eyes and pray. Heavenly Father, I pray for these precious people. I give them in your mighty hands, O Lord. Lord, thank you for releasing your word. Thank you for releasing your word. Something wonderful is being prepared for us. Yes, Lord Jesus, you will honor our waiting. You will reward our waiting. You will honor our patience. You will reward our patience. Bless these precious people. Continue to minister to them. Everyone that has already tasted the appetizer. Lord, I pray that let the appetizer prepare them to receive more from you. To receive more than, than it is needed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Bless them, O oh Lord. We pray that may your hands be placed upon them. And Lord Master, may your grace elevate them from pit to a position that is in the heavenlies, closer to you, in your presence. Bless them, O oh Lord. Bless the children. Bless the children's children. Bless everyone that is connected to these precious people. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's a season in which they will be able to see that the word of God is fully honored. Bless them, O oh Lord. In the blessed and precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.